I'm Tiffany Michelle, professional poker player and television host, here to give you a simple poker news tutorial on how to play Texas Hold'em poker. Don't worry, I'll make this as fun, simple, and headache-free as possible. Unlike other casino games where you play against a dealer or the house, in poker you're battling it out with the other players at your table trying to make a better five-card poker hand than them and ultimately trying to take your opponent's chips. The dealer is merely there to help facilitate the game. Up to 10 players can sit around a poker table and play the game together, but usually nine is the perfect number, and we call this a full ring game. The object of Texas Hold'em is for each player to make the best five card poker hand combination by matching one or both of their two face down cards, which we call whole cards, with what will eventually be five face up community cards on the table. Community cards meaning that the other players at your table are also trying to match their two-card hand with the five face-up cards on the table. A five-card poker hand can be made in different combinations using one card from your hand and four of the community cards on the board, two cards in your hand and three cards on the board, and sometimes, but rarely, using all five cards on the board. The fun of poker is that all players can see the community cards on the table, but will have no idea what two cards their opponents are holding in their hand. Since you're trying to make the best five card poker hand, it's important to know the hand rankings in poker so that you're familiar with what beats what. I suggest you either pause this video and check out our poker hand ranking video before proceeding, or just cue that one up next. One hand or round of Texas Hold'em consists of multiple phases. Let me give you the overview of how the game is structured before taking you through step by step. Phase one, pre-flop. Each player will receive two cards face down. There'll be a round of betting purely based on seeing these personal hole cards. Phase two, the flop. A dealer will place three community cards face up on the table, which we call the flop. And another round of betting will ensue based on this new information. After the bets are collected into the pot, we enter phase three, the turn, where the dealer will place a fourth community card on the board, followed by another round of betting. Phase four, the river, is when the dealer places the fifth and final community card on the table and allows one last round of betting. Any players still left in the hand at this point have entered the showdown phase, and as the term suggests, will flip over their two face down cards and finally show their hand. The best five card poker hand combination will be determined and the winner will collect the pot of all accumulated chips. That's the overview of how a hand of poker is structured. So let's go through it step by step and show you what it'd look like to actually sit down and play a hand of Texas Hold'em poker. In a poker tournament, players who have paid the entry fee will sit down at the poker table and a dealer will slide them a stack of poker chips of a predetermined amount. In a cash game, however, the amount of poker chips you receive have a dollar value and equal the exact dollar amount that you bought in for. But in a poker tournament, the number of chips you play with does not have a dollar value or correlate with how much your entry fee cost. In poker, one player acts at a time, moving clockwise around the table. In order to know who starts, a button on the table called the dealer button indicates where the action begins and which player is first to act. At the completion of each hand, the button will move one position clockwise in order to fairly rotate around the table. If the goal in Texas Hold'em is to make the best hand and win the chips, we need a pot of chips to play for. This is where the blinds come in. Before the cards are dealt, the two players to the immediate left of wherever the dealer button sits are required to place automatic bets, which help get the pot of chips started. The player to the immediate left of the button places what we call the small blind bet, and the player to the left of the small blind, or two to the left of the button, places the big blind bet. We collectively call these the blinds. Blind, of course, meaning you've placed a bet before you've seen your hand. Don't worry, as the button moves around the table after each hand, every player will pay the blinds, thus making it fair for all. In a poker tournament, the amount of the blinds increase based on predetermined time increments, but in cash games, the blind amount will stay the same for the entire game. The one consistent with the blinds is that the small blind will always be half the amount of the big blind, and as the game unfolds, the big blind amount is the minimum amount any player can bet at any given point. Once the blinds are placed, the dealer from a 52 deck of cards will give each player two cards face down. Once dealt, you can go ahead and look at your two face down cards, but keep them close to or touching the table and be sure your opponents can't see them. 
Whether you like, love, or hate your two cards, you must wait until it's your turn to act before doing anything. Since the small blind and big blind bets have been put out by the two players to the left of the button, the first person to have a turn, or in poker we say to act, in this pre-flopped round is the player sitting to the immediate left of the big blind. This player has three options, call, raise, or fold. If you like your two whole cards and you want to keep playing in the hand in order to see what cards come out on the flop, you would need to call. At any stage of the game, a call means to match the most recent bet that you're facing. In this exact moment, a call would mean to match the big blind bet. If you really like your two whole cards, you might want to increase the amount of the minimum bet that you're facing by raising. A raise means to put out more chips than the bet you currently face requires, and must be at least double the amount of the existing bet. If you don't like your whole cards and you don't want to waste any of your poker chips, you would fold, meaning you discard your two cards and forfeit your participation in the current hand or pot. But don't worry, you'll have another chance to play. But once you fold your hand and push your two cards into the muck, you will have to wait until that round of the game is over, someone has won the pot, and the dealer shuffles the deck and deals all players two new cards in order for the game to begin again. One by one, going clockwise, every player will have an opportunity to act on their hand with the same three options of call, raise, or fold, which only changes if a player acting before you raises. Once a raise has been placed, it is now the minimum amount you must pay in order to continue in the hand. If you wanted to exercise the option to raise somebody who has already raised, we call this a re-raise, and as stated before, must be double the amount of the existing wager. Once the pot of chips is right, meaning that every player has either called the bet in front of them or folded, the dealer will pull all the chips into a pot in the center of the table and then place three cards face up on the board. This is called the flop. Don't be confused if you see a dealer place one card face down before they place cards face up on the board. This is called a burn card and is simply part of the game mechanics in order to ensure fair play. After the flop has appeared, another round of betting will occur, but now in this and all further betting rounds, the player to the immediate left of the button in the small blind position will be first to act. In addition to having the three options of call, raise, and fold, there's one new action introduced at this point. Since the player in the small blind seat isn't yet facing any bets from any other players during this new betting round, they can check, which basically means I don't want to bet anything yet. Consider it a temporary pass. Subsequent players can also check, but this is only an option if no bet is made before you. If a player decides to place a bet, any players acting after them must call that amount, raise or fold, in order to continue in the round. If everyone decides to check, then that round of betting is complete and the dealer will reveal a fourth card on the board. We call this the turn or the turn card. Another round of betting will ensue, beginning with the player to the immediate left of the button and moving clockwise around the table with all remaining players exercising their right to check, call, raise, fold, or re-raise if applicable. Finally, the dealer will place the fifth and final community card on the board referred to as the river and the last round of betting will take place as it did in the subsequent rounds. Once the pot is right, meaning any bets placed have been called or the action is checked around, players left in the hand will show down, meaning they finally flip over their two whole cards to reveal what they have, and the best five card poker hand is determined. On occasion, players could have the same rank hand, in which case the pot of chips would be split among the tying players. But usually, one player's hand emerges victorious and they are pushed the pot of chips that was accumulated from all betting rounds. It's important to note that oftentimes in poker, you might not get to the river card and showdown stage, or even to the turn card phase, since folding is an option that is widely used in poker. At any point, if a player makes a bet and every other player doesn't want to pay the price, opting to fold their cards, then the betting player would win the pot then and there and is not required to show their two whole cards. A player must only reveal these two cards if they make it to the final river stage and complete a betting round. Congratulations, you've completed one hand of poker. The dealer will now shuffle the deck and will do it all again, over and over and over, until there is only one player left in the tournament who's won all of their opponent's chips, or in a cash game, until you decide you've won enough chips and you want to get up and cash out your stack. Good luck at the tables. Well, 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 
You made it to the end of the video. If you want to subscribe, click up here. Want to keep watching our stuff? Click right over here.